Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video, I wanted to actually help you visualize the speed of light by using Universe Sandbox, by doing it actually different from what you may imagine. We're going to use one of the functions in the game to try to discover how fast the light really travels. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So uh, this is the new and improved Universe Sandbox uh, Alpha 20, or maybe it's not improved, but it's definitely new. We don't really know if it's improved or not, time will tell. So what we're going to do in uh, this video today is we're actually going to talk briefly about the speed of light, but really what, we're want to, what I wanted to do in this video is to help you visualize how fast the light really travels, or in this simulation, or in this case, how slow it really travels. Light does sound really, really fast. Uh, for example, if you were to take our Earth here, light can travel around um, Earth several times per second. As a matter of fact, if you do the math, since the uh, circumference of our planet is about 40,000 kilometers, light can travel approximately nine times in one second. That's how fast it would go around it, which is why we, we have um, a possibility of such services as the Internet. Uh, internet pretty much relies on the efficiency of light speed and the reason why if you're uh, in one location on Earth and you want to communicate with the other location and you get something called lag, that's really because the uh, the actual signal from one location to the, the other location takes some time to travel and uh, often it will be measured in something like milliseconds. Now, anyway, so we're not going to be talking about Earth though. We're going to, uh, well, first of all, let's decrease time. We're going to change time to real time, seconds per second. So this will be one second per second. And uh, we're going to measure the light travel from the sun visually. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use this power here known as the pulse. It's a pretty cool little power. What it creates is, uh, it basically does this. If I, if I launch it, uh, it's already actually set to light speed, so let's let's just launch it in like kilometers per second, and we're going to be launching. Um, I guess let's start with the ring, and then I'll show you the sphere as well. And we're going to do this from our planet Earth. So let's zoom into Earth, and I'll show you what this does. So here we're launching this at a speed of about thousand kilometers per second. Let's accelerate time just for a second, and here we go. Pulse from Earth. So there's the ring, and if you wanted to actually see the sphere, which is what we're going to be doing, here's what the sphere will look like. So this is particles traveling from Earth at a speed of 1000 kilometers per second, um, although not in real time, in real time it will look like this. So here we go, this is real time at 1000 kilometers per second. Looks pretty fast. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same, but we're going to launch these particles at, at the speed of light from the sun. So basically, we really are visualizing what it would look like for various light particles, or not, I would, shouldn't call them particles, light waves, although, you know, light is wave and a particle, as has been proven many, many years ago. So we're going to launch them from the sun and see how fast they travel and how long it would take to reach Earth. We're not going to be doing this in real time, we actually are going to accelerate time later on, because as you'll see really, really quickly, due to the distances you need to travel here, it will take forever, not forever, but very, very long to reach anything. So let's start this from scratch. And here we go. One light speed away from the sun at real time and launch. And there go those particles. So this is what light travel would feel like when it travels away from the sun. So when the sun emits any kind of light, it basically travels at this speed. So let's actually close this. We don't really need this anymore. And let's take a look at all of these particles as a whole as they basically proceed to the rest of our solar system. So it will take um, at least a few minutes to get to Mercury and you can see that it's actually taken quite a long time. So this is why even at the fastest possible speed in the universe, it, it will take us at least four years to reach the nearest star Proxima Centauri. Because light actually, even though it does travel really fast for Earth uh, standards, for space standards, it's super slow. It's actually very, very, very slow. 
And remember, this is the maximum speed of anything, including communication. So all of the signals that we uh, send to space or receive from, from space would actually be also traveling at this velocity. So, you know, trying to call home from Proxima Centauri would actually be impossible. And sending an email would take you eight years, over eight years to, to get back, uh, to get a reply uh, back. So we're gonna wait for uh, for this light to get to Mercury while I'm basically just kind of talking a little bit more about the actual idea of light travel and light speed. And really what I wanted to kind of uh, focus here, and really what I really wanted to kind of help you visualize here, is how every single moment the sun actually releases these uh, light particles away from itself and how they basically spread across the universe. And every single one of those specks that you see behind, this is essentially a star that did exactly the same thing. And so what you actually see, like for example, right there, is one of these little light particles that finally reached our planet Earth um, after many, many, many years. And this is the information we get from each of those stars. So people often forget that what we see in the sky is actually sort of like a history. It's not really in real time at all. You see what stars looked like uh, years or even hundreds, thousands, and millions and billions of years ago. So even like, for example, a supernova that you might see in the sky uh, one day will actually be light from a star that probably traveled for like thousands and thousands of years because most supernova will probably occur somewhere on the outskirts um, of our galaxy or possibly in a completely different galaxy like Large Magellanic Cloud. So our light is about to finally reach Mercury. This is after a few minutes. And as you can imagine, it will take quite a long time. As a matter of fact, um, about eight minutes to reach planet Earth. And we're not going to wait that long. We're actually going to accelerate time. And we're going to just maybe accelerate time by about 10 times first. So this is 10 times faster. So this is light traveling at the speed of light, but 10 times faster. Now, this also creates a lot of problems for future of exploration, of course. Um, so for example, you know, light from Earth to Mars will also take a few minutes to travel. So Earth to Mars communication would be quite difficult. You can't just like real time call someone. You, you can only record messages and send them back and forth. Uh, anything further like Saturn or Jupiter will obviously be even more difficult. And communicating with objects like uh, Pluto, for example, would take hours. So this is where light travel, uh, or the speed of light that is, is very, very limiting. So until we actually discover technology, probably using some sort of a space-time uh, folding, we would not be able to actually efficiently communicate with outer space. So we're about to reach Mars. This is at 10 times the, uh, the speed of light, basically, or speed of light, but accelerate 10, time, 10 times. And uh, we're actually going to... We can't really wait for it to get to Pluto, so we're going to accelerate this 100 times, just so you can actually see how long it will actually take for it to reach Pluto. So there's Pluto right there. It will be a while before light finally gets there. And so we actually have quite a few probes out there, like, for example, Viking 1, Viking 2, um, Pioneer probes as well, that are actually very far away from, from our Sun, from our Earth. And I'll show them to you in a second. But uh, a signal from those probes takes hours to reach. So you can kind of see, it's, it's, it's becoming really difficult to see these particles, but there they are. There's one of them at least. And they're spreading farther and farther away. And even at 100 times um, the acceleration, basically 100 seconds per second, it still is too slow. Like, I'm actually losing patience right now. I, I cannot wait that long to reach Pluto. Let's go to 1,000. Let's accelerate this by 1,000. So there we go. There is one of our particles, and, it's, and hopefully we'll now be able to reach Pluto. So there we go, finally. So we had to accelerate our particles by 1,000 times for us to not lose, or for me not to lose patience, waiting for that light to actually reach that far. Let me show you the pros that I was talking about. So if you actually go in here, 
And under historical here, you actually have several Voyager simulations showing you the location of Voyager. Uh, for example, um, when it passed Jupiter in 1979, um, and when it passed uh, Saturn in 1980. And then, today, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 are basically right there on the outskirts. Outskirts of our solar system, way, way, way past Pluto, but still actually within the so-called um, Kuiper's Belt, so not even close to the Oort Cloud, which I've talked about in other previous videos. So this is pretty far away from, from the Sun and from Earth, and obviously the light uh, or any signal from Voyager 1 or from Voyager 2 would take several hours to travel back to Earth. Specifically, if you actually do the calculations here, and you can actually just see the distance to host, which is the sun, and we can look at the light seconds here. So it's about 68 or almost 69,000 light seconds away from our sun, which means that if we then look at Earth as well, and look at the distance of Earth from the sun, in light seconds, it's only about 500. So it's about 68,000 light seconds away from Earth, which is, if you try to convert this to like hours, by dividing this number by 3,600, which is a amount of seconds in one hour, you'll get about 19, 18.9 specifically. So that, that means that light from Voyager, was that Voyager 1? I think it was Voyager 1. Light from Voyager 1, will actually take about 18.9 hours to reach Earth. So every time there's any signals coming from here, they will take a while. And uh, Voyager 2, I believe, is right here. It's a little bit closer. So here, the distance is about 57,000 light seconds, which means that it probably takes maybe about 16 hours or so. So that's essentially the idea of light speed, the light travel, and hopefully this video helped you visualize how far away things are, even for light, and how slow things move away from the sun, even at the light speed. So here it is again, I'm gonna actually launch a few pulses here at light speed, uh, we're going to make a sphere. Let's just make maybe a lot more particles this time though, and this is once again going to be in real time, and here we go, one pulse, Let's make another pulse, and let's make a third pulse. So there's three pulses at the light speed moving away from the sun. And this will take approximately 18 or almost 19 hours to reach Voyager 1. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to mention in this video, and hopefully you enjoyed watching it, and hopefully now you know a little bit more about light speed and how slow light really is. Let's finish this video by exploding our sun and creating a beautiful supernova in the back. I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye bye. And if you still haven't subscribed, don't forget to click that subscribe button, share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn through video games, and if you actually have a few bucks to spare, consider supporting this channel on Patreon as well. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Something happened to my supernova, it's not showing up. There it is. There is that beautiful supernova. Anyway, space out, and as always, bye bye.